Okay, we can do lots of practice now. So this first one that we've got here, I'm going to in y notation, dy by dx is just going to be, well, I've got blah cubed, which will go to 3 blah squared. And I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of this, which is 2x. So simplifying that, deal with the first and last bit. 3 times 2x is 6x. So it is 6x, x squared plus 1 squared. Done. The next one we've got here, we've done one very similar to this already. This is the same as x plus 1 to the power of a half. Differentiate blah to the power of a half to get a half blah to the power of minus a half multiplied by the derivative of that, which is just 1. So actually, that one just is exactly how you might expect it to be. What I might like to do here, if the question required this further kind of inf um, thinking, we would have a half multiplied by, well, if it's to the power of minus a half, that is 1 over the square root of x plus 1. So if I was going to write that as a single thing, it is 1 over 2 root x plus 1. If they wanted you to present it in a particular form, you need to make sure that you are able to convert between power form and non-power form, index form and non-index form. OK, so this is where things get interesting, OK? Sine to the power, sorry, not sine to the power of, sine 5x. I've said in this little box here, what do we expect the answer to be from earlier on? 5 cos 5x. So we expect the answer to be that dy by dx is going to be 5 cos 5x. And we're now going to show why that is the answer. So I have got, as this function, I have sine of blah, OK? And we know that sine of blah differentiates to cos of blah, because sine differentiates to cos. But you have to remember to multiply it by the derivative of blah, which is 5. So dy by dx, sine blah is going to go to cos of blah. But you also multiply it by the derivative of 5x, which is 5. So it does give us the exact thing that we were expecting it to be. And earlier on, we said, this is the chain rule. You don't know what the chain rule is yet, but this is why the chain rule works. Now, the most important thing I want you to notice here, because people always make this mistake, the argument here is 5x, and the argument here is 5x. What people love to do is to change this second bit randomly. They go, oh, well, sine goes to cos x, and they change it to cos x. The arguments must remain the same. OK, sine of blah will differentiate to cos of blah. It will differentiate to the same thing that's inside it. Please don't forget that. OK, this time we've got y equals ln x cubed. So this is a bit like blah cubed. And when you differentiate blah cubed, you would expect to get 3 blah squared. But this time you need to multiply it by the derivative of ln x, which is? 1 over x. So I can either write it like this, or I could write 3 ln x squared all over x. We've avoided having to do any of that long bit with the chain rule there. OK? So the next ones that we've got are including the exponential function. So I've now got e to the power of blah. This is like e to the power of blah. And we know that e to the power of differentiates to e to the power of. It stays the same. But this one's going to be a bit different because the thing in the top is blah. So it's going to differentiate to e to the power of x squared plus x. But we need to multiply it by the derivative of blah. And the derivative of blah in this case is 2x plus 1. So it needs to be bracketed. So you get 2x plus 1 e to the x squared plus x. Notice here how the index stays the same. It doesn't change. The blah remains there. It's not like it's suddenly going to become e to the x. It has to stay like this.
OK, so we've now got ln of sine x, which is like ln of blah. What does ln normally differentiate to? 1 over x. So ln of blah is going to go to 1 over blah, 1 over blah, and you'll multiply it by the derivative of blah. So in this case, it is going to be 1 over blah, because it usually goes to 1 over whatever's in there. And we're going to multiply it by the derivative of sine x, which is cos x. OK? So the answer to this is cos x over sine x, which is cot, cot x. Yeah, other way around, cot x for that one. So that's completely crazy, right? You differentiate the natural logarithm of sine x, and you get cot x. Two things that don't seem related to each other, trigonometry and natural logarithms. When you differentiate them, the natural logarithm goes, and you just get uh, trigonometry. OK. This time we're going to be examining things with another x in the exponent, x in the, x in the power. So this is blah squared. So you're going to be differentiating blah squared by getting 2 blah to the power of 1, which I'm not going to write. And you're going to multiply that by the derivative of what's inside the brackets. What's the derivative of 2 to the power of x plus 1? ln2 times 2 to the power of x. And I'm probably just going to, will I leave it like that? I'll probably just leave it like that. It's never, it's very, never very easy to simplify things with the ln stuff in, OK? And then this last one looks hard because it's e to the power of e to the power of x. But really, this is just e to the power of blah. Now, e to the power of blah is going to differentiate to e to the power of blah multiplied by the derivative of blah. What's the derivative of blah in this case? E to the power of x. So it's e to the power of x multiplied by e to the power of e to the power of x. Yeah, so if you wanted to combine that, that's e to the power of e to the power of x plus x, because you add the powers when you're multiplying. So that's how you expected it to go. Notice how the power stayed the same. You mul multiplied it by the derivative of the thing that was at the top, which happened to just differentiate to itself. So we have got one, two, three, three left to do. And then we're going to do a bit of practice. And then we'll do some other things to finish up. OK? So mm -mm -mm, three left. I've changed the notation a little bit here. I've just said differentiate this thing. So it's not, no longer y equals. It just says differentiate this thing. So we've got sine of x squared minus a half sine of x squared. Sine usually goes to cos. So I can immediately write down, I know that the answer is going to be cos of x squared. There's going to be that in there because sine goes to cos. I've also got the minus half, which was still there. And I need to multiply by the derivative of the bit that's inside, 2x. The derivative of this blah, this is minus a half sine blah, is minus a half cos blah multiplied by the derivative of blah, which is 2x. Now you can deal with the half and the 2, which cancel. Not well, They do cancel, so you get minus x cos x squared. So what you'll find is lots of things differentiate to products because of the fact that you're multiplying when you do the chain rule. OK. So this time we've got minus 2 thirds cos of blah. Cos of blah goes to minus sine of blah. So it's going to be minus 2 thirds multiplied by minus sine of a half x to the power of 4 multiplied by the derivative of blah, which is 2x cubed. The derivative of a half x to the power of 4 is 2x cubed. No, so that the half is all incorporated into the chain rule. So you know when we earlier on said things like sine kx differentiates to k cos x? That is the chain rule, because the derivative of kx is k. So when you do the derivative of this thing, which is 2x cubed, you've already dealt with the k. 
okay? So you know the rules we had earlier about like this thing. You kind of don't need to know these rules anymore. It was just to help you to do those exercises. You don't need to know those rules anymore. You just need to know the chain rule. So we're then just going to tidy up this thing that we've got here where we have a negative and a negative, so they're going to cancel. I've got 2 thirds times 2, so that's 4 thirds. I have x cubed, and then I have sine a half x to the power of 4. There's a lot going on. That's why you need to kind of take these things as slowly as we can. OK, we're now going to just try the last one before you go and do some practice on the whiteboards for me. This one, we want to differentiate this with respect to x. So I've got here ln of blah. And we know that ln of blah, if this is what y equals, then dy by dx would be 1 over blah multiplied by the derivative of this, of blah, which is 2x plus 3. And I'll bracket that, OK? So I'm going to put that together so that you have 2x plus 3 over x squared plus 3x plus 5. That is the derivative of ln of x squared plus 3x plus 5. And what you should notice is that this is the derivative of this. And that's what I've said in this box here. In general, if you're differentiating an ln of blah, you get the derivative of blah divided by blah. So the numerator is the derivative of the denominator for ln functions. OK, you've done an awful lot of concentrating and listening then. So we're going to try some practice from exercise 9c. We've still got a few more things we need to do to be able to do all the questions. So I'm going to select some questions for you to have a go at in just a moment from 9c, OK?